Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the four to five. I'm Eric Chilton with Tahitia Moyes. Yes, Maddie Gardner has the day off, but we are here to make you feel connected to the world around us and inform you on what's happening in your community. Yeah, make sure you get on WFMY News 2's Facebook page. We're live right now chatting with folks. We talk with you during the break. You actually get to see behind the scenes cameras during the break, which is a lot of fun to use the hashtag uh, word for number two word five to stay connected. But right now we are going to get you caught up on some headlines of the day with your four to five roundup. We are beginning in the because there was a groundbreaking today for the new public's distribution center in Guilford County. Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn, public CEO Todd Jones, and Governor Roy Cooper were all there. That company is investing $400 million in the triad. 1,000 people will be hired by 2025, and the salaries will average at around $44,000 per year. That distribution center will open in 2022 on Burlington Road across from Calvary Baptist Church. Well, the search for a missing teenager in Davidson County continues. People are searching in a wooded area for 17-year-old Nicholas Allen. Investigators search from the skies. Allen was last seen about a week ago driving a black Dodge Journey with North Carolina plate HCV 9093. Well, Lamar Advertising Company declined PETA's request for a new billboard in Winston-Salem. The animal rights groups wanted to raise a billboard after a cattle, a number of cattle was killed in a tractor trailer crash. The billboard would have been along I-40, pushing people to go vegan to lower the number of livestock transported on the highway. Lamar said that they do not accept advertising from PETA. Yeah, we're checking the forecast today. We have something cool to show you here. We have uh, this camera and this is provided by the folks at WeatherStem. It's at App State and when I put this in motion, you'll be able to see it a little bit better, but it's the football stadium there. But look at the snow in Boone this morning. You can even see some of it accumulating on the lens. And then of course the sun came out, uh, dried things up, kind of a cool time lapse there. And you see the stadium become more in the way of snow free, but that area will see more snow as we head into uh, the next 24 hours or so. In fact, we could see that in Boone tonight, overnight into tomorrow. Not for us here in the triad, 27 degrees, clear and cold. Tomorrow, 48. Now we will see some clouds start to develop late day with the chance of a flurry or a sprinkle. No accumulation expected with this. This is a very weak front. You can see the winds will still be picking up as we head into the night. There's that trough causing the snow for the mountains and for us maybe a flurry again. That's Friday afternoon, no accumulation in the Triad. That high pressure that you see to the south that will be scooting back up north and east right over us and really start to warm us up quite a bit by next week. We'll check the complete seven day forecast for you in detail coming up. The World Health Organization is holding off on calling the coronavirus a pandemic. For that to happen, there would have to be more countries added to the list of close contact transmission, which hasn't happened just yet, that threshold. In the meantime, cases have spread to 45 countries, and South Korea announced over 500 patients and their 13th death. A U.S. service member stationed in South Korea is among those diagnosed with the virus. Here in the U.S., health officials say the coronavirus case in California could be the first case where a patient has had no connection to someone already sick or that traveled abroad. President Trump announced that Vice President Mike Pence will be leading the administration's response to the coronavirus. The president wants everyone to stay calm. In a news conference, he said that the outbreak could expand, but also may not. And that's really a sentiment that some triad health experts are repeating as well, because I know when you hear all these headlines, it's very easy to become concerned. But Dr. Chris Uhl, who is an infectious disease specialist at Wake Forest Baptist Health, says we shouldn't be too worried right now. Well, the first thing is just don't panic. Um, we've actually lived through this, and you know, to to some extent, in 2009 when when the swine flu came through, and um, and we all did fine. Dr. Uhl says you are more at risk of getting the flu, but with more cases expected to pop up, he says it is a good idea to start thinking of what you would do if things get worse down the line and maybe schools or daycare shut down. In the meantime, he says hospitals all across the state are preparing to take on extra patients. Now something else to note here, Dr. Uhl says that the coronavirus will run its course in about a week and an otherwise healthy person will recover. Now those who are at higher risk of developing any complications 
populations are the elderly and those with diseases in the lungs or heart. While multiple labs are working on a vaccine right now, Dr. Uhl doesn't expect one to be ready for at least 12 to 18 months. Well, it looks like schools in Japan, they are shutting down for the entire month of March. Officials want to control the spread of the virus. Japan has more than 800 cases of the virus and over 700 of those were from that Diamond Princess cruise ship. 1600 elementary and middle schools will be closed. Schools are expected to reopen in early April. And because of all this, the costs of surgical masks are going up with the increased demands. Now, Amazon sellers are passing off of the set of 15 respirator masks for over $400. Now, the respirator mask fits closely to the face and it claims to block out more than the average mask. A basic surgical mask usually costs around $20 for 100 masks. The same number of masks costs about $100 to make. Well, JetBlue Airlines offering waivers now to travelers that are canceling trips. Uh, the company only flies in the U.S., Caribbean, and Latin America. It is the first airline to offer waivers as of Wednesday by getting rid of change in cancellation fees. This applies to flights booked from today through March the 11th. In the meantime, Marriott International anticipates that they could probably lose about $25 million in monthly revenue because of the coronavirus. The company is currently dealing with low occupancy rates, as you can imagine, in the Asia and Pacific area region because of the virus. So they are offering cancellation fee waivers for guests as well. For those dealing with the outbreak in China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and that'll go on until March 15th. Oh, soda. It's bubbly. It's sweet. You know sugary drinks aren't healthy for you, but how many can you have in a day without it being a problem? Hmm. Maybe one. Maybe one, one drink? I don't think it's probably one a day. I think you probably should one have one every, yeah, like one every three or four days mm. or something. Truth. Okay, <laughs> a new health study says one 12 ounce soda really can affect your cholesterol. Just wow. one. Just, just one. one. And you know what? It's not even just soda. Because now I'm going to lump in like your Gatorades, your fruity drinks oh, no. that have the sugar in them, the sports drinks that you think uh. are healthy. I'm going to lump that into. OK, we're talking cholesterol and sodas at 6 o'clock. Plus, we've got this for you as well. As if this right here was not bad enough. OK, a fire at your apartment complex means you're moving several doors down. But then you get a water bill. A twelve hundred dollar water bill. That was no ridiculous. That's more than my rent, car payment. <laughs> That's not mine. Um, I'm not paying that. Um, we got to get this fixed. The water people. She basically called me. Was like, well, if you don't have any of the money on it, we're gonna cut the water off. Okay, and they did. So the Greensboro woman was left with no water. So after the fire, after the fire, she's not she, living there. She's living two doors down. But was she charged because of the water they used for the fire? No, no? although that was my initial reaction yeah, yeah. too. like, oh, that's where they made the mistake. And they said, no, is there a leak <laughs> or what? <laughs> right, I mean, right. right. Or you're thinking maybe it was the person who lived in that apartment two doors down that she's now living in or whatever. OK, I asked the, all of those questions uh, because it happens. Uh, it wasn't either one. It took. Hmm. I'm going to say a few weeks of calls and being really persistent to figure out what the real problem was. So how does two wants to know and call for action finally solve this case? Well, you'll find out coming up at six. And if you have a consumer issue, these volunteers will be taking your calls from five to six thirty today. Get ready to call in with your issue. We're going to put the number up at five o'clock.
You know, we all have that friend or family member that makes a dish that we all love. Well, I am usually not that person, but there's only one dish, only one, that people ask me for, my family and some friends. So I thought we would do a little cooking this morning and share it with you. This is perfect, by the way, for a cold night like we're going to have tonight. Take a look. I know when you see a cooking segment, you may not think of Eric Chilton, but let me tell you, my mother always said never trust a skinny chef, so we're moving in the right direction. Today we're going to do chicken marsala over linguine. It's the only dish that I make that my family loves and some of my friends will ask for, including Tracy McCain. So here we go. So you dredge your chicken in the flour, put it in with extra virgin olive oil. You want to put it in there while the olive oil is pretty hot. Then what you want to do is put sea salt on the chicken and pepper. Then we're going to add the marsala. This is the key. With marsala cooking wine, if you're not used to using it, it's flammable. So if you have an open fire like gas stove, which we don't have here, you have to be very careful. Throw in butter. Can't go wrong with butter. That's a half stick of butter. Chopped up mushrooms, this is great for flavor. And then we'll add some chicken stock. And all this is kind of just sighted. This is where the goodness comes in, my friends. Heavy cream and lots of it. So make sure the water was boiling first, right? And then you put your noodles in. For this particular type of linguine, it's 10 minutes. Check the noodles to make sure how long you need to cook them. There you go, chicken marsala with mushrooms and cream sauce over linguine. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to end it like this. Ooh, it's so good. <laughs> my, I read Mr. Food. My Mr. Food <laughs> yeah. impersonation was so bad. I posted this on my Facebook page today, but I asked everybody, what's your favorite comfort food? I think you did a good job there, and the thing that impressed me the most was the sight. You didn't measure anything out, you just knew. It's one of those things where the guy that taught me this recipe was on the Good Morning Show, actually, and he taught me, he goes, do not write down amounts. He said, I want you to feel what's right, and you may have to do it wrong a few times, so. Feel what's right. Yeah, there you go. All right. I, I wish I could have some, but I was out on a story. <laughs> and by the time, it was up. all gone by the time I came back. Next time. <laughs> Brian Bennett is minding the store <laughs> over here. See what people, comfort food is a topic everybody wants to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I try to feel what's right too, Eric, and then my wife just kicks me out of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't right, work for right. me. Um, some of the comments that we actually got from the stream first, I'm gonna do the stream first. Uh, Shelton says, chicken wings and ribs is his favorite. Donna says, chocolate, anything. And Richard said, basically anything that is bad for you. And uh, Julie <laughs> said, homemade ice cream at Freddy's Dairy Center in Mount Airy. Now let's uh, get right to the tag boards here. Mary says, French fries dipped in a Ooh, frosty. I've seen that done. Yeah. Yep. I've never tried that before. My cousin actually loves it. Katrina says, pizza, mashed potatoes, macaroni, and cheese. Yes. Love a good macaroni and cheese. Miss Carter says chicken dumplings, meatloaf, macaroni and cheese, and red velvet cake. Oh. Mm. I just gained about 80 I'm pounds. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> Me too. David Williams says fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. Mm. Everybody's loving the macaroni and cheese. Danielle says chocolate Hershey bars. Do we have one more here? That's it. That's it. That's yeah. all she wrote. Sounds good to me. I really <laughs> like all of those. So one thing my mom always makes for me when I come home, she will make stuffed shells and it has ground beef and kind of a ragu sauce in it with the cheese on top. You oh bake gosh. that in the oven. So it's kind of like big ziti, yeah, but yeah, in a yeah. shell. The pasta shell. Yes, the big, the big oh shells. Gosh, uh, yeah. That. What's your favorite comfort food? Ah, too many. Uh, burgers, pizza, uh, milkshakes from cookout. Yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. My wife can't stand these, but I love the pineapple shakes at Cookout. Mm. I've never had that. Love those. Is that a seasonal one? Or I is that one know. there all year round? I think it's there year round. The watermelon seasonal, but the pineapple. But uh, if I'm doing traditional uh, comfort food for me, it's like meatloaf, mashed potatoes, gravy, green beans. I love Kimberly here. She just wrote chicken and dumplings. Donna oh, wrote yes. here, don't break the pasta. Are you not supposed to break the pasta when you cook pasta? See, I do that. The only, I know, my wife says the same thing. The only reason I do that is because I can't stand it when it's sticking up out of the pot. I want it all to go underwater like that. So, sorry about breaking Teach the pasta. Own. 
Oh yeah, out. we do have to say uh, special congratulations oh, yeah. to Shannon of Reedsville. You're the winner of our boat show ticket giveaway. So congratulations. Yay. Shout out to Reedsville. Very good. Four to five will be back in a minute. For you, not so fine for me. <laughs> At least one of us is okay. That's all that matters. One's better than none. So it was all pomp and circumstance. Some singer used to live there. Country singer? Uh, oh, okay. He was kind of. Hi there. I am running super, super, super behind. How are you guys doing on time? No comp. How far are we, I'm, I'm asking? OK, I mean, what, what time do I have to appear? How far am I away? 4.54, OK, I have six minutes. All right, so you see them on social media. Sometimes they're even your friends or they really feel like it, right? Social media influencers, they are getting paid for their content. But is it a sustainable income? Two Texas moms teach us how to break into the biz. Randallyn Bailey and Julie, a.k.a. Tangled with Taste, are busy moms and social media influencers. The pair spend their days juggling their kids, other jobs, and posting online. Julie got into the social media game first, starting her blog in 2016. If you were to go to my feed, every other post is lifestyle, every other post is food. What I like to do is for every ad, I want at least three or four personal posts as well. Her Instagram is filled with food, lifestyle and vulnerability posts where she shares the ups and downs of her life. I don't make any money off of those, but that's what has people on my page is those posts and it's real, it's raw, it's emotions. Randallyn met Julie because of one of those posts. <laughs> then she got inspired to become an influencer too. She just had so much fun doing it and she was getting paid to do it. I'm like, this is genius. I was like, well, I got help when I was doing this, like when I first started and without that help, I would not be where I am. When I met up with the duo, they had several shoots planned. First, La Luncheonette in Belton. Then we moved to this beautiful Brandon Watley home. The pair worked like clockwork. I like it. Setting up shoot after shoot 
after shoot. We can like shoot for like six campaigns in one day, one afternoon. We're like, okay, we've got this many hours. Let's go whip out as many campaigns as we can in this many hours. We bring 10 outfits and we're changing real quick and fixing each other's hair. And I think that's what every influencer needs is a best friend that's also one and you can help each other. And it was Julie who helped Randallin learn all the ways you can get paid to post. She says there are two main options. One, subscribe to a mother platform where companies post jobs. You apply, you give them a pitch of what they're going to get from you, and then hopefully you get chosen. And then you get a contract, you fulfill the contract, and then you put it on your page, and that's how I make money. The other way is to pitch yourself directly to a company. Usually you'll get paid more because you're not having a middleman. Um, but it's also a little bit harder to go that way. And before you go thinking this is just as simple as scrolling the gram, Julie works 80 to 100 hours a week. If you love it, it's worth it, but it's, it's, it's really hard work and a lot of it. Randall Lynn, who struggles with depression, works about 40 hours a week and uses the money she earns to supplement her family's income while also getting her out of the house and helping her be more social. It's kind of therapy for me. I get to spend time with my best friend. I get to review products that I would have never probably purchased. I've helped with like financially for my family. Um, it's just, it's been a blessing for my health. So what's their advice for someone looking to get paid to post? First, make sure it's something you want to do. Like, if you think it's going to be an easy way to make money, you're wrong. It, it's not easy. It's a lot of work, and most people don't take it seriously. Then find someone to help you, like they did. Don't do it alone. Um, have a really good give and take relationship with someone. I wouldn't be able to do this with Julie if she was always keeping tally on what, oh, I did this, this, and this for you. So you got to do this, this, and this for me. If this isn't your realm, if this isn't your happy place, do what makes you happy. Because I feel like we're all given this like little push inside of us that if we listen to it, we're going to find something we're amazing at. And this isn't it for everybody. Well, if you have to be that cute to be an influencer, I am out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked, I was looking at that thing. But no, 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 please. It's, it's called no, I like the shot when she was in her dress. So you got to get up on a counter. <laughs> Is that what you and have like, to do? like, you know, dance to be an like Tom Cruise. Influencer. Okay. Yeah. No. But you know, it really is hard work. So my sister, she uh, she's kind of a micro influencer and she runs social media for a uh, brand that has thousands and thousands of followers and all she's doing all day is thinking of campaigns. Okay, this oh would make gosh. a good picture, but what is the the hashtags that I'm using and the caption because the caption can determine sometimes whether or not people will like your photo. You have to be clever constantly. Right? right? To be an influencer. That's difficult. Yeah. And you right. want to have a message that is something positive that you want to spread to people yeah, too. Because that's a big part about being an influencer. All right. Well, I can't influence you, but I can give you a forecast. There Here's you go. what we get. Do you feel influenced? <laughs> Here's what's going on. Uh, 48 degrees. Oh, by the way, 27 will be the overnight low tonight. We should talk about that first. Uh, the chance tomorrow of a late day sprinkle or a flurry, maybe a little wet snow mixed in with that. It does exist, but we will not see accumulation. Make sure you remember that. No big deal if you see it. No need to panic. 48 for the high tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday, all sunshine, 45. 54. We warm up next week. 60 partly cloudy on Monday, 65 on Tuesday, and some rain and thunderstorms on Wednesday. Coming up on WFMY News at 5, a North Carolina teen made headlines as he registered voters as they waited in long lines to buy chicken sandwiches. And now he is on another mission. How he's helping high school students prepare for their futures. That's next on WFMY News at 5. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Hello, this is Tim. We're doing a mic check. We're talking about weather. Hi there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. 
Hi, mic check. One, two, three. Oh, excuse me. Mic check. Hey, getting ready to head in there for the five o'clock. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check. One, two. Mic check one two three. Mic check one two three. I will be at ATAC.